Hey everyone, and welcome to another Planet Coaster Element tutorial where today we will be looking at the Batwing. Now, th this episode is going to be slightly different in how we build the element because usually I would base the element off of a real manufacturer's shaping, like let's take the uh, the Cobra roll, that was a, uh, I did that in a B&M style, and then the Junior Mum, and that was the Max style, the B&M Hyper, yeah, stuff like that. But because the Batwing's kind of a unique element that isn't really used by one specific manufacturer or, you know, used by B&M, I don't think on anything that isn't their inverted coasters. So to do a sit down one, we're literally going to do, we're not going to base it off any specific manufacturer shaping. I think we're going to design this one just by, a f by forces and shape alone. So if you want to build like a realistic, you know, B&M Batwing, then this may not be the tutorial you're looking for but i may plan on doing some specific ones for like the inverted batwing in the future so anyway let's kick it off with the uh, the tutorial so for the start of our batwing basically how we're going to do this is like i said before we're not going to base this on a specific manufacturer like i'm using the gerslauer infinity coaster for now because it's probably the most well gerslauer shaping is the most generic they don't have a specific style. They just like to, you know, build it by forces. But um, it's very similar to other manufacturer styles. So I think we're going to use the Gerslauer anyway. So to begin the kind of entrance into the Batwing, um, there's usually two different types of Batwings. There's the flat ones, which like, you know, Arrow use. And then there's the kind of curved ones that Gerslauer use. But for this tutorial, to keep it simple, we are just going to build a flat one. And... Usually when you build a batwing, they normally the bottom half of it goes into the floor, but I'm going to try and build a taller one so we don't have that issue. So basically how we're going to start it is we start with a dive loop. So, you know, start with a three foot banking offset, start increasing the height and the turn. I don't think we're going to build a massive one here. Pull it up, a little bit more curve, keep increasing the banking. Increase the banking and turn a little bit. Keep increasing. Basically, we're just going to keep increasing everything, really. Building the dive loop entrance into the Batwing. And then when we get to this point, this is where we're going to start pulling the turn across more. From the top. I'm kept supports on. That's probably not a great idea for now. There we go. That's better. Alright, so now we're going to whip this over to about 150 degrees. Pull it down to about 10 and have a turn of about maybe 20 degrees. We'll do a lot of editing for this. Is that too much of a turn? No, we'll go for like a 16 degree turn instead. And now we're going to clip that. And now snap it to 180 degrees. I might use this. There we go. We'll go for a turn of about 10 degrees to finish it off. And then stop pulling this down to about a minus 20. No, it's 18. I'll do. Uh, take the. I'm going to take the banking offset off. Zero out, and then we're going to start building the pull up for the loop. I think we may end up actually going into the floor with this a little bit. That's actually not such a big issue. I can just raise it up a bit. I'm going too fast here. So as always, we're just going to you know gradually increase it so that you know off the top of the loop it should be quite tight and then gradually ease out towards the bottom so maybe like a 35 then maybe like a 20 a bit tight. Uh, I'm gonna quickly raise this up so it's not in the floor that should be much better go for like a yeah go for a 20 then maybe about a maybe 10 degrees and then zero here now, the difficult thing about Batwings is, is that you need to try and get the middle of the Batwing to be between where both, you know, points are gonna, gonna meet. So if I, if we're gonna place a flat piece here, and this will act as our midpoint. And now we can start going up again. So we know that was 10, 20, 35 roughly. And basically what this is gonna do is create the bottom and then we will, uh, of course, tweak the shaping as we get to the, uh, get to the end so now basically what we've just done we're going to build the exact same you know just in reverse so 
so get to there. Pull it up more. Uh, keep in mind, you want to make sure that this one is slightly shorter, maybe three or four foot shorter. So this is a 75 foot one. We're going to aim for like a 72, 71 foot one now here. Tighten it out at the top. Completely zero it. Uh, I feel like we've made this one slightly tighter, haven't we? So going to slightly ease that off. All right, 72 feet. Now put the three foot banking offset on. And then we're going to increase the banking this way. But because, again, it's a bat wing, we're going to add a slight amount of turn, 10 degrees, and whip it to about 100, and, I think we went 150 last time, so we're going to go for a 150. And now all we do is build the exact same in reverse, so increase the turn to 20, down to maybe about 40, and then increase the banking to about 100. And then keep, I guess we can keep the turn pretty, oh no, we have to keep, increase that to about 30. Looks a little bit wonky at the moment, but that's, you know, that's plank coaster for you. Now we're going to tighten it. Slowly decrease the turn. Unbank it to about 30. Give you a 35 there. And then... Slowly unbank it again to 10 degrees. And then zero it out with a, about a 5 degree there. And then, I think that's a bit tight to zero out straight away, so I'm going to quickly zero degrees, zero degrees, and then zero there. All right, that is the basis of our bat wing pretty much down. It's pretty, looks pretty fine to me. So, all we're going to do now is do a slight bit of adjustment to some of the track pieces to make sure that they're, you know, going to be even on both sides. So, to start with, I'm going to quickly raise this piece up basically this is just so that they look both of the you know loops look even on both sides as you know not only is that better for your forces but it just generally looks better it's just constant tweaking of the pieces to make it look better you see from this angle it kind of looks like the smiler's one as well but the smiler's one is actually slanted halfway so it's nearly not an inversion <laughs> uh gonna quickly lower these Quickly put them so it's more, we've got more of a curve in instead of a straight section. Um, yeah, it looks pretty okay to me. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to get rid of this straight section and make it so it's more of a flowing curve between them. So, starting, I'm going to pull this down, pull this one down again, pull it down, pull it down, pull it down, and now we're going to pull this one down so it's sloped, and then pull that one down slightly. Put it down, down, and then down. So it's going to really ease out on the radius towards the bottom of the, uh, the bat wing there, which is better for your forces as well. It gives a break for the riders because there is a certain limit of time that riders can spend at, su at such high g-force before it becomes uncomfortable and dangerous. So having a you know an easing out of the bottom here really does help. So we're going to start a quick little bit of smoothing before we smooth the entire thing out by selecting from, you know, the first bit that snaps to 180 degrees, which is this bit here. Select it all the way up to this part here. I'm going to hit smooth all a few times. This way we can get the radius of the, uh, the bat wing loops smooth before the rest of it. How's that look from here? pretty good so now I'm just gonna keep hitting the smooth all and I think that should mean that that is nice and smooth between the two there uh, now all we need to do is take this up to this one here so select the first piece of 180 degrees and then one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then go again to here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now select the whole element. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Roughly about fifteen times. And then that is the radius of the bat wing. Nice and smooth. So now we just need to usually do our usual 
readjustment of the banking and we should be nice and good to go. So I'm just going to select to there and there. Click and then whip it over so that these should now all snap to zero degrees. Probably going to get a bit weird around here. And yeah, they look good to me. So basically, like I said before, this isn't really based off of a specific manufacturer's style of Batwing. This is more based off of you know, designing it around forces and shaping that just kind of, you know, looks right and will probably ride pretty smooth. So now all we need to do is just adjust that. Slowly unbank that one. Unbank, 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 and then whip it over at the top slightly. I guess I should really just say that this is more of a modern bat, uh, bat wing because Arrow bat wings are very like old school, like you know, they'll completely top out 180 degrees, so it's like this. You know, there's a lot of lats going up the top of there. This is more of one just designed using that, you know, modern shaping and heart lining. So if we look from here, does that look any good? Yes, it does. Now exactly the same over here. Oh, I need to lock the time. Forgot about that. Um, this one's slightly more curved on the exit, so we're going to need a little bit more banking. Just unbank that. Slowly unbank that. Unbank. Unbank. And then flip it over. So that looks pretty good to me. Yep. Uh, I don't want to have too much of a whip at the top, otherwise that's going to smooth strange and we get you know, not a very smooth element. Yep, there we go. So that is pretty much the shape down. And all we need to do is turn it into two meter pieces doing the usual method. Okay, so now that these are all in two meter pieces, all we need to do is just, you know, do the whole smooth all again. So we select the whole element and we spam smooth it a few times, a few seconds, get it nice and smooth. Again, because two meter pieces, they don't move as much as four meter, so it takes a little bit longer to get the radius smooth. Uh, I think that should do it. And now all we need to do is just simply go back and readjust the banking like we did for the four meter bit. So select the two about there and up to there. Snap. Is that nice and good? Uh, is that overbanked a little bit? It's probably just because it's, it's, a, it's a weird piece. I'm going to quickly try and adjust that so it's... Yeah, there you go. That looks about right. Yeah, these pieces when they're uh, transitioning from like 90 to 100 and 100 plus degrees, they do tend to get a bit strange because the game doesn't really know what value to give it. Because, you know, it's kind of overbanked and looks a bit weird. Uh... That should be nice and good. Uh, now all we need to do is just readjust the banking on the entrance. It's a little bit strange working with Gerslauer track because I'm so used to using like the BNM one because of all the other tutorials. So it's a little bit, it's, it's a nice change to use this track style because it does look really nice in this game. Even if the trains are, well the trains are a different story. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, when you use the two-car variant of the Infinity Coaster instead of a four-car one, it genuinely, it's quite realistic, but the wheels are too small, it's too wide, and don't even get me started on how two cars are joined together, but... Nah, it's fine. It does what it, it, does what it needs to do. Plus, at least it has lap bars as well, that's nice. Not enough, uh, not enough coaster games give inverting coasters lap bars, you know, they don't do those kind of styles. Probably smooth pretty good. I might actually just slightly adjust that and increase it. Just because I'm conscious of having a bit of wobble on the entrance. But that should be okay. Yep, there you go. Now we just do it here as well. Again, because this, this side's a little bit more curved than the other one. So we're just going to need a little bit more banking on the uh, on the exit. 
just so we don't want any excessive lateral g-force. Like I've said in the previous tutorials, me just kind of flicking back and twisting these pieces, you'll get used to it if you just practice building elements. You'll get used to tweaking the rides constantly and changing values really quickly, kind of like this. It all comes with practice and a lot, a lot of time. <laughs> Because this game, believe me, building coasters, it is not a short process. It is a very long and time-consuming thing. But you do get nice results, which is the important part. Let me just quickly look at this. Uh, looks good to me. And I think... Is that going to be too much of a whip off the top? No, that should be okay in terms of the smoothing, I think. That looks fine to me. So, we're going to start the smoothing, as usual, by going six pieces at a time. And I'll let you know how many times we go back and forth on that. Okay, so I basically just went forwards and then backwards once with the six pieces because I didn't really want to use the six pieces because I feel like it would, you know, it was going to ruin the, uh, the banking on the entrance and exit by banking it too much. So now we're going to just use three pieces and probably go maybe like once or twice on the back and forth again for the same reason yeah so I basically just went forwards and backwards once with the three pieces now I'm gonna try and use the uh, the banking trick on these but it's gonna be very difficult just like the dive loop because of the way that these elements kind of work. So for the entrance, we just need to smooth forwards about halfway. And then for the exit, we need to smooth... Uh, well, we need to smooth forwards, but from here to there, rather than, like, you know, from there to there. So I think we'll try and give it a go. I just need to try and find the value where it, you know, exceeds 90 degrees, which is... Well, I think it's about here. So again, I'm going to mark it quickly. So we know that that one is roughly the one we need to adjust to get the smoothest result. This is going to be difficult. Got my head fully tilted to the side here. Now I've got to try and find out where the... Actually, I guess I can look at the spine here and find out... Okay, the inconsistency is here. So if I gradually increase that, it should be a smooth transition. In theory, of course, I have no idea if that's going to work, but we're trial and erroring the, this to see if we can get it right. So I'll just revert the colors back to their original values. Now, where is the one where it exceeds 90 here? It's here. Okay, it is that one. So now we need to start from here and simply smooth backwards and let's see what this is like. If this banking trick doesn't work, all you need to do is just, you know, leave it to what we did before. Literally, like, you know, smooth forwards and backwards a few times with six and three pieces. And if it doesn't work with this, then just don't try using the banking trick at all because it will may, it may just ruin the element. But I'm here to take the risk, so you don't have to. Now, I'm assuming it's... Which piece is that going to be? Now I'm torn between... Okay, it's this one. It's absolutely... Is it that one? Um, okay, I'm going to try this one instead, I think. Uh, that's now in line with... Yeah, I think that was the one. I mean, I gotta go to try this one to what it's like. But then it looks like there's a bad inconsistency there. Yeah, there is. Oh, I hit the scenery. Nice one, me. It's there. So we're going to go from there instead. All right. Um, that is pretty much the Batwing done. Uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. You know, we've got the uh, entrance and exit pretty much even from the top. Kind of a diagonal one from the top it, it does kind of look like i don't really know what does it look like a t i guess it's a t um yeah i think we'll give this a quick test and uh see what it's like
there you go. So it actually seems like our banking trick did actually work there. But uh, yeah, you can see there that we kind of have two-step banking there. So it banks initially and then whips over the top. And same on the exit. Let's... I would say check it from guest facing, but because of the way that the Gerstlauer Infinity works, you see how these two cars are, you know, joined via parallel that, so that they can only roll independently of each other. The back two cars are also like this. So basically, it's as if this is one car and then that's another car. Well, actually, that's how it is in game. There are only two cars on this technically, even though that's a four car Gerstlauer. But so it does kind of change the um, back row of view, but we'll go with it anyway, I think. Yeah, that does look pretty good from that view as well. Banking's very smooth. Yeah, there you go. So that is pretty much the uh, Gerstlauer Infinity. Gerstlauer Infinity? The, uh, the Batwing tutorial. It's a uh, strange element for sure because of the, uh, it's, it's, it's not really used very much on coasters around the world anymore. It did used to be used quite a lot by Arrow multi-loopers. But I guess the most recent addition would probably be like, I don't know, like the Smiler? It's, I can't think of a coaster that was built after the Smiler that used the Batwing. Because Banshee and stuff used like bow ties and pretzel knots instead of Batwings. Um, but you know, anyway, um, thank you very much for watching this Element tutorial. And I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to you guys for the support on the channel recently because... We uh, <laughs> already hit 180 subscribers, and that is mind-blowing, and the Aurora video. I'm really glad that you guys are enjoying it, because uh, at the time of recording this, it's about 930 views, which is amazing that this will be my first video above 1,000, and I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed that ride, because I loved it. I love building it. I love theming it. I love doing everything. I love making the video for it. It was that much fun, but... Um, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying it. I'm really, really thankful for all the support you guys have been giving me. So, yeah, please stay tuned for any more videos that are coming out because I have some more in the works. I've got a new Planet Coaster project going on that you guys might be excited for that'll probably happen near enough Christmas time. Not sure if it's going to be Christmas related. It might just take that long. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's another stupidly ambitious coaster project that I'm undertaking because what else have I got to do, you know? So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, and I will see you all next time.